So the mobility revolution that started um, with Uber's launch in 2013 has been super important. Um, I think there are a number of big players now in the market trying to solve sort of transportation from a range of different angles. And that can be everything from uh, the logistics companies who are trying to make the cost of moving goods and apply technology to ease uh, the friction of moving goods across the continent uh, to the two-wheel mobility guys who are making it easier to catch a bike and making that safer and more effective, more profitable for riders. Um, so there's a number of solutions that are in place, you know, everything from uh, Karim and Swivel in North Africa, which are doing buses. Um, so we're applying technology in a number of ways to improve efficiency, to improve safety, and sort of solve problems in a continent where obviously there are a lot of um, logistical challenges. And um, what TechCabal has done here is bring some of the biggest players in that space to talk together about what's happening, what's going well, um, what the challenges are, and how this matters for you, uh, the consumer in your house, or you, the business owner. So I'll speak specifically about our space, and we are primarily concerned with connecting the cargo owners to trucking in the first instance, right? And the way that we do that is we have a platform whereby the cargo owners can post the, 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 the goods that they need to move, and then the transporters can then post, um, can, we can then match them to transporters that are in our pool. And that provides visibility for the cargo owners. It gives them a single line of sight into their goods. We're able to track the goods from when they're loaded across the entire journey to when they're offloaded. It also helps them to drive prices down by increasing supply. And on the other side, it, gives, it helps the transporters by giving them utilization for their assets. We believe that not, assets are not utilized by more than 20%. And we think that with our platform, we can multiple multiply that by almost five times. I mean, think about it. The average person spends four to six hours a day in traffic. That's easily a quarter of your life, sitting down inside traffic, just bumper to bumper. And what are the alternatives to that? Danfoss, where there's a lot of one chance, or Okada's where one person dies every 60 minutes officially, that's too much. Definitely a lot of tech transfer companies have the capacity to do that. But not just because we're a tech transfer company, but because the companies who can do this are focused on quality of service, you know, purpose, mission, and are actually solving problems. There are companies out there putting people on people on bikes and killing them. Those are those why they use tech, they don't represent what the industry should stand for or represent, right? And there's companies like Max who are doing a lot of work quality assurance, quality um, calculations, you know, general work around safety, and make sure that whatever we do out there, we, are, we can be held responsible and liable, and we can beat our chances to say that, yes, this is the best in the market. So in, in our app, we're able to see traffic patterns, of course. So if there is heavy traffic, our drivers will be advised not to move, but that solves our COBO problem. The bigger question is, how do you solve the entire ecosystem problem, right? It goes into a solution we call a call-up system that we built for the port authority, right? So we are hoping that they will adopt that. And that solution is able to allow drivers to queue in digitally by dialing a USSD code. And from that USSD code, they will now get a response on the time that they can enter the port. Right? That should at least be able to drive 60% efficiency in the current port traffic congestion. And a lot of the traffic are also originating from that axis. Right? So with that, if we're able to do that, and with the infrastructure that Dangote is also building with, in the port area with roads, I think that the port might be able to work. And if the port works properly, and also another infrastructure we're doing is called driver support centers. So it's a massive project that is able to pack 1,500 trailers in one of those uh, centers. It has 300 sleeping beds for drivers to sleep and take a break. It will further reduce the road congestion by trucks parking on the roads, further reducing accidents. 1.2 million Nigerians die every year on road accidents. This is something that allows drivers to rest and remove those trucks from the road so that we can save at least 50% uh, of those lives again. 
Okay, so this event for me has been a closer look at mobility startups and what drives them. I've learned that as much as they really help us get around, most of them are not profitable just yet. And that is concerning because if they're not profitable, they're not sustainable. And then we, we still don't have a solution to the problem. And I've also learned about the attitude of regulators thus far to, um, to a lot of these um, mobility startups because the challenges they face have to do with government not being on the same page with them. Governments want to just get money out of them and not create an enabling environment for them to do work. So these have been two vital takeaways for me from this event. It will be a means for access for more people because many people may not have access to these platforms. Many people may not have access to move around easily, but with technology, they will have that means of gaining access to more options. The main thing is that they'll have more options to move around the country. So one, um, one of the best things I learned from this event was during the breakout sessions. And someone asked a question saying, okay, this, all these are great, you know, but what's the long-term um, outlook? What's our long-term vision for the country as far as technology goes? Do we want to see more bikes? Do we want to see more cars? Or should we be focusing our energy on fixing the roads itself, you know, fixing the more mass transit, like trains and stuff like that? And I think that's a ever-going debate. So some people were of that idea as well, like that we are very... Um, unsure about the future, what it will look like. Is it going to be more bikes or should we channel our energy towards fixing the roads and stuff like that? And where others are saying, instead of thinking about that, let's solve solutions for today. So that debate about um, thinking long term or solving solutions for today, I think is very interesting. And I personally think we should have to find ourselves in between, both solving today's solution and always thinking about a long lasting vision for the country and solving in that direction.